All right, so that's what Bilaam realized, that even when the Jewish people are in exile, <coughs> no matter how far they seem to be away from God, in fact, exactly the opposite, because the Jews seem to be far away from God, they have more of a desire, it'll be revealed more, their essence will be revealed in the future redemption by means of the Mashiach. Which is supposed to be right now. I mean, so. Dalit. Call by it Yehudi. Every Jewish home who Olam Bifanayatsmo is a world in itself. Bechal Bayit Yehudi in every Jewish house. Yeshno Tsiur Shalem Shel Esesvirot. There is one, a personality. Every home has its own personality with what's called ten sfirot. Chachma bina does, it has its purpose, it has its idea, it has what's, how it's connected to reality, things they love, things they don't love, live, fear, love, fear, purpose. Keshem sha sfirot, just like the upper spheres of godliness, these ten aspects of godliness. And in the powers of the soul, which reflect the upper powers of God. That's what it means man is created in the image of God. We have these ten spheros, just like God does. In other words, we have love, we have fear, we have balance, we have wisdom, we have understanding. Because God has all these things. But the way God has it is an infinite way. But nevertheless, we have it also similarly here. Every Jewish home is like <coughs> a human being, and it's like a whole world. The whole world is also like a human being, and every human being is just like a whole world. It's like a home. So everything has this thing of ten spirit that has its own personality. Kashem, just like in the spirit of above, and in the powers of the soul, which we just talked about. Yes, no, there is. Yitaron, an advantage of Bina over Chachma. What do we say? Chachma is the concept, the idea, the goal, <clears throat> the motto. Bina is understanding that goal, making it realistic, making it workable, answering questions about it. <clears throat> That's Bina, understanding. So Chachma is the idea, the concept. And being is the understanding. Every house has its chachma, its point, its concept, and bina. It has the, the understanding of that concept. What are we, what are we talking about? Let's see. So it's chachma is like the father. Bina is like the mother. Even though the bina, understanding, receives from the concept, you have a proper idea. That decides your concept. A person decides, our house is going to be based on Judaism. But that's the idea. You know, how do you, what does that mean? It means we're going to get the Torah, we're going to see what the Torah says, we're going to get a Shulchan Aruch, we're going to see what the Shulchan Aruch, but the idea is Judaism, right? And from that idea comes all the understanding of that idea, right? So, Bina, the understanding, receives from Chachmar, from the original idea. The same thing if a person says, no, our house is going to be based on communism, right? So that's an idea. What's going to be the outcome of the idea? You have to read books about idea. You know, is it going to be this, this type of communism or that type of communism? What? <clears throat> but if the whole bina comes from a different direction. Of which, it's almost like what train you take, right? You get in the, you're in the station. Which train you take, that's like Chachma. But right? what's train station? What the, which train station you take? Well, just an example. In other words, the beginning point, that's Chachma. And how it develops, that's called bina, understanding. Like Penn Station. Because by means of having the proper idea and the proper understanding, then you can have the proper emotions. Right? What you get excited about, what you like, what you hate. If your house is a communist house, then you hate money. Then you hate anyone who is, <clears throat> has a better job. You hate anybody who says that 
that, that, were, that people are, are different. No, everyone is exactly the same. If you come from a Jewish house, then if you have a lot of money, it's a wonderful thing. You can give charity. You have to give charity. But differences are good. It's a good thing that there's differences. If there wasn't, you wouldn't be able to give charity. You wouldn't be able to care for other people. Every, exactly the opposite. Judaism says everybody is different. Everyone has their own nature. Everyone has their own importance. So, but it depends on what is your chachma. What's the point? What's the concept that the house is based on? He mashpas alamidos. Then that, the ideas that you have, the principles that your house is based on, that's what affects the emotions. What you get excited about, what you like, what you don't. Mekabels min chachma. Mekach so it is a father and a mother in every house. A father and a mother in every single house. A house is based on a man and a woman. Aisha, the woman, the woman, she has to listen to what her husband says. And to do what he says. The man is what they call the man of the house. Who is a good man? Please look inside, Yonah. Who is a good wife? Call <coughs> Shaosa, anyone who does, a woman that does Ratsu and Bala, what her husband wants. Aval, but on the woman depends. Hadavar, Shahora Ot Benagelachinu Chabani, in regarding to the education of the children. Al Yasurat the Torah, Mitzvot, the woman depends on it actually getting done. Ideally, it should be if it's a Jewish house. The father has the ideas, the father has the, 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 the concept, right? And the mother, she's the one that carries out the concept. Nowadays, it's, of course, it's totally different. <clears throat> but nevertheless, this principle is still there. Netina Tzedakah, the woman, she's the one that actually gives charity. She's the one that's at home. She's the one that's in contact with the children. She's the one that has the closer contact with education and with the day-to-day life. That's what Bilaam saw. Bilaam saw that in every Jewish house there's a father and a mother, like the Avos and the Imos. And this is what guides a Jewish home in the proper way. Guides it. Of course, people have free will. They can do what they want. But at least it guides them. Barov, Shaot, Ayom, the majority of the day, Habal, the husband is not at home. Oshu, Asuk, Batorah, Batafila, either he's learning Torah and praying, Oshu Asuk Binyani Parnasa, always making a living. Isha Kashera, a good wife, Tsaricha Shiot Osa, that she does her husband's will, or you can translate the word Osa, she makes her husband's will. She causes her husband to want good things. She's the one that really makes the will. Ratzon Balasha, Ratzon Yavoli De Poil Mamash that what her husband wants will actually come to be done, and she also causes her husband to want the right things. She gives him suggestions, gives him ideas, etc. Biyad chazaka u'bzeru anatuya. Lifamim sometimes mutal ala'isha, kashera. Sometimes, says the Rebbe, and that's what I said now, it, rely, it depends on the woman to create her husband's will. Now in Judaism, it's a very interesting thing. In Judaism, the essence, the basis of Judaism, in fact, the basis of all mankind, all humanity, you with me, Yonah? The basis of all society is the home. Is the home. <clears throat> that is some people try to, you know, the, the change everything around. You don't have to have children. You don't have to get married. You don't have to, that's destroying Life is destroying society, is destroying mankind, is destroying the family. The essence of, of man is the family. From the family comes human beings. How are human beings born? A mother and father. Yoni, are you with me, please? Yeah, the, uh, mother and father, they're the ones that have children. Without children, there's no... But how many children do they have? It, it, up, to, up to them, up to God, whatever God decides. Whatever God decides. But nevertheless, the essence of, of life, of society, of mankind, is the family. When the Jews got out of Egypt, they got out families. They took the Paschal lamb, they ate it with families. The family is the essence. 
Judaism looks down very heavily on celibacy. Celibacy means not getting married, not having any <coughs> sexual relationship. Evan looks very down on it. On the other hand, it also looks down, very much down, on things that go outside of the family the other way, right? And obsessions with sex. <coughs> Maybe, I don't remember. It has to do with that um, Judaism radically different from everything else in terms of sexuality. Because Judaism, it's about procreation, about making families and children. Right. And other religions, they, they do all kinds of weird stuff. They, <laughs> the essence of the most precious thing in the world is life. Life is precious. Because, the, and especially human life, because human life implies free choice. So those people who say that they're free choice, that they decided to have abortions, or they're free choice, they decide to uh, <clears throat> not to get married, or they're free choice, they decide they're going to have same-sex marriages, or they're free choice. It's the acts, acts that those people are anti-free choice. Because by not having children, there's less free choice in the world. The essence of man is free choice. And by not having, by refusing to have children, they're refusing to, to create free choice in the world. Very simple. But it's so selfish and so self, self-centered and that they, all they care what they think about free choice, they're talking about their own personal free choice. That's not also, but let's go back to our subject. The subject is family. Sometimes Multa Alisha, sometimes a good woman has to yitzor. She has to create her husband's will. Kishabala so but of the husband is all busy and he is the chasar eats and the husband does not have any desire to do what he, God wants from him. He doesn't desire it. So Isha, then the good wife has to in a peaceful way and in a nice way, pleasant way she has to bring out her husband's will to serve Hashem. How do you say? To convince him, to coax him, to entice him, to discuss with him, but to make him more serious about doing Torah and mitzvahs. Shekein kol Yehudi Ari Because that's what every Jew really wants. Every Jew really wants to do what Hashem wants. That's what every Jew really wants. At least that's what the Rebbe says. Okay, she'ish ve'isha, when a man and a woman Zachor, if they merit, that the Shekhin is between them. Then the house, Mitnael Batsura Shehi Mikdash. Then the house becomes a holy temple. Shalav, Omar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that's what God said. Shekhanti Betocham, I will dwell within them. Kevin She Shekhin Shirui, because the Shekhin is there. God's presence is in the home. Hari Lo Yagur Chora, there won't be any bad things that occur in the home. Shenim shachach tov, they'll only be good. But tov anir of anigla, and revealed good. But bani chayom is only the kulam berivichi, and all of them in a way of plenty. So the household is so essential because there's a mother and father. Same thing, all the Jewish people. There's a father and a mother. The father is Avram Mitzvah Yaakov, and the mothers are Sora Rivka Rachabalea, and they provide a connection to Hashem close and far away. Okay, go drink a coffee or something. Yona, go drink a coffee, stand up, walk around. Okay, let's do a little bit more. Huh? Yeah, stop it. We'll start.